Good morning from Granite Lake. There were so many points last night where, because I've been driving for so long, I just wanted to pull over into a Walmart parking lot and eat fast food and I, the temptation was super real and it's funny how like, how much better it is this morning waking up on this lake and having eaten a decent meal last night. I feel like a million bucks and I would not feel like that if if I hadn't persevered that last few kilometers. So. It's weird how van life just like has these temptations for you to eat garbage and for you to sleep in Walmart parking lots and just stay in the cities. It's all about that long-term satisfaction, not those uh, short-term little, little vices. So yeah, we're gonna spend the next 24 hours in the woods, traveling around, getting, getting closer and closer to the Canadian border, but there's a few little things I wanna see, including tomorrow I really wanna see Glacier National Park. But um, yeah. For today, I'm just seeing some national forests and uh, enjoy my last couple days in America. Our first roadside stop is uh, Round Lake, a gorgeous little slice of northern Idaho. Second stop of the day is Kootenai Falls. This waterfall is very beautiful, very big, but um, more interestingly, as a giant swinging bridge, which is uh, actually serves a utilitarian purpose. This bridge was for firefighters fighting forest fires to reach to the other side because it's just Montana nothingness forest. So there's no other way across. So um, they built the original bridge way back in the 1930s and then when it burned down, they built this new cool like a uh, swinging one. Really rad. Uh oh. Champ hates stairs. Champ doesn't like stairs that he can see through. So he won't walk on them. So watch him. Hey, you gonna make it, buddy? Do you, need, do you need me to carry you? Oh boy. Oh my god, you're hilarious. Well, stop a second. I'll carry you. I'll carry you if you want. No? Man, you just don't stop, do you? Okay, hold on, hold on, hey! Hold on, you don't gotta walk down those. I just had the policy that if he continues doing it, it must not be hurting him that much and he's just gonna keep doing it. He made it safe and sound. So yeah, I have this policy that if uh, if Champ doesn't like stop and tell me that he's hurting, 
then I'm gonna assume it's not hurting him really because um, yeah most of the time he just gets really really irritated with me if I make him stop and then have to go another way or something like that he gets really mad so I just let him do it make, let him make his own decisions he's old enough frankly a lot of confidence. I'm doing okay. So this is our campsite for tonight. I hope you can hear all the loons in the background over Champ's loud snorting and ruffling. This freaking old man dog, he makes so many noises. This is so cool. It reminds me of back home, it reminds me of Quebec. The, uh, this, I tried to get to this campsite off of uh, freecampsites.net and it said like, oh yeah, it's like a mile off of off the paved road and super easy to get to. Turns out it was actually 17 miles off a paved road down one of the roughest, most suspension destroying roads ever. So I got like halfway there and I said, mm, no, they're not doing it. And I doubled back. And that's the thing with the internet, man. These people like put up comments and messages and you just, you just take it at face value as if they're completely sane. But you don't know who they are. You don't know anything about them. I mean, they're just a username, right? Like if it was in person and they're like foaming at the mouth and like, 
you know, going crazy down the sidewalk, you wouldn't listen to anything they had to say, you know, at all. But because they're on the internet, you take them seriously and then end up screwing yourself. Because this is quite obviously an insane person put this up. Like, foaming at the mouth crazy. Because that was not fun. It was not good. But this campsite's pretty good. So you just gotta follow your nose. You know, when you see a good spot and it's about time for you to crash, just do it. Because this spot's awesome. And I just spotted this one off the road. Anyway, I'm not really complaining. I mean, the websites like freegutcampsites.net have taught me so much about, you know, camping, about finding dispersed camping spots. It's been amazing. But I just want to illustrate a point that the campsite that's listed in the listing is usually not the one I actually end up camping at. It's a combination of knowing that there's camping in that area and so heading there because of the website. And then once I'm getting close to the area, I'm on like maximum alert trying to look for any kind of spot, you know, any kind of uh, national forest dispersed spot or like some sort of BLM land spot or even just like a private, public, whatever, nobody cares kind of spot. Um, and there's a lot of tips and tricks to all of that. You learn, honestly, like it's so dependent on your style of camping and what kind of rig you have. You learn a lot more just like doing it yourself. Uh, the tips I have probably won't work for most of you guys. But yeah, basically you look for the brown signs, you stay away from mailboxes, and uh, if you pass a cattle catcher, you're heading in the right direction. That's all I know. Today I'm having a little bit of meat ravioli. I'm doing a rosé sauce with it, and Champ is watching every second of it, aren't you buddy? And breathing real heavy. You're getting so old. Breathe so loud. Oh my god. With dinner, I'm also having a uh, Guinness Nitro IPA. This is kind of confusing. I mean, it's like a Guinness in that there's a little, little, little plastic ball in there and it's got that smooth, milky texture that uh, a Nitro has usually. But the IPA, it doesn't come off as like bitey the way that an IPA usually does. It uh, instead comes off almost garlicky, if that makes any sense. It's very bizarre. Anyway, I kind of like it though, so I'm gonna have another. <laughs> Anyway we can't, you know, you know, it's an adventure world that we're creating.